Hey everybody, my name is Fast Kareem with Learn It, and I want to welcome everyone to Microsoft Teams Advanced. There's a beginner course diving into building teams and channels and the basics. But with Microsoft Teams being around for about three years now, there's quite a new list of features and advancements that have come out throughout the months. Let's go ahead and cover those today. Now, with that being said, I want to point out this course, I like to make it hands-on. I know you're at your desk and I'm at mine, but it's nice to go ahead and have your Microsoft Teams open. That way you can practice and follow along and also kind of replicate the things I'm doing. I might even go ahead and say, I practice this for just a quick second during my videos and come right back just so you can get some experience because studies do show that you form a muscle memory uh, of some sort when you practice these things as opposed to watching someone do it. I'm really excited to cover quite a list of nifty features that Microsoft Teams has. With that being said, I highly encourage you to take a look at the Microsoft Teams beginner course if you have not. And let's go ahead and begin. I'll talk to everyone soon. So with Microsoft Teams, I went ahead and built everybody a team here. And I'm going to be using this throughout the day. If you don't know what this is, it's typically just a SharePoint site, a SharePoint online site that we have available. So we have a team site, typically built for collaboration and communication and sharing files across a department or a specific project or a purpose that we discuss in the beginner courses. Now, with each one of these teams that we build inside of Microsoft Teams, it will actually go ahead and come with something called a general channel. Now, these channels are great to keep your work or your department's or your project's works organized. Whether you want to go ahead and make some posts or you want to upload files and you maybe want to make some of those files easily accessible to people by adding them as tabs. So with this being said, an overall structure of a Microsoft team is a simple team with one channel. Now, most of us at this point have discovered the use of channels where as a team owner or some members, depending on permissions, can go ahead and add individual channels for different projects or different sectors in your department. Like for example, we can go ahead and build like a Project X channel and we can go ahead and keep all of our Project X discussions and conversations and files organized in one spot. I'm going to go ahead and add this channel as a standard channel into my team. That way, everyone who's inside of this team will automatically have access to it. So, I'm going to go ahead and click Add here. And now I have two channels in my Microsoft team. Kind of think of a channel like a folder. A folder that we all have access to, but it's a pretty powerful folder that allows us to make posts, upload files with those posts, and we get to make some of those files easily accessible by putting them to the top of the interface known as a tab. So in about December of 2019, Microsoft actually released an additional tool. It's called a private channel. And we can actually go ahead and build a specific type of channel that only a few select members have access to inside of the overall team. So I'm going to go ahead and build a private channel for, let's say, maybe my leadership team or my executives that want to be a part of the team but don't want to see their conversations or they don't want their members to see their conversations and their files across those channels that they have. It's kind of like a secret channel, a private channel, they call it. Now I'm going to go ahead and go back to my ellipses here and I'm going to add a channel. But this time I want to go ahead and build one for my leadership team. And I'm going to put a description, a private channel, for my leadership team. And all I have to do is change that channel to a private channel in this window here. Private. It's only going to be accessible to a specific group of people within the team. Now, it has to be a subset of the team. Someone has to be in the team in order to be in this private channel. And now that I've selected private, I have to do it here because it won't give me an option to do it anywhere else. I have to do it at the very start. I'm going to go ahead and hit next. 
once I've added the channel, it's gonna go ahead and ask me to add a member from the team. I only have one other member in this team. It's Learn It Instructor. I'm gonna assign Learn It Instructor this channel and add him to it. And then up his rights to an owner. That way, Learn It Instructor can go ahead and assign people to this channel if he needs to. I'm also an owner and I can do that, but it's nice to have more than one owner per channel if you are using private channels. Now that I've added in my secondary owner and I'm also included in this team, I'm gonna go ahead and hit done. You're gonna see my leadership channel has popped up with a little lock. That's gonna signify a private channel. I do want to point out a private channel is essentially a separate group connected to the previous group that we have. Now, if you are hoping to use Microsoft Planner at the current moment, that won't be able to be connected to this current group because it's a separate group from the team. It's okay if you don't know what that is, but it's a great task management system that's built in. It's another application Microsoft offers that integrates into Teams that no longer will be connected to this channel. So now that we have a private channel, and a standard channel. We have a way to communicate privately with certain leadership members and all of our members across our channels in one unique spot. Hence the name of Microsoft Team. This is our team site and now we have three separate channels. With that being said, I hope you picked up on the use of building a channel and building a private channel, noticing the differences between the two. And the very big takeaway I want all of us to follow is knowing that a private channel will no longer be able to connect a planner plan to it, which is kind of like a Kanban board. We can delegate tasks and organize them and send out task reminders. At this point in time, everybody, I want you to just pause the video, try building your own private channel within a team. And if you are doing it on an actual team and you want to clean it up, go back to the ellipses and hit delete. Um, once you have built it, if you're working on an actual team your department's using. Go ahead and pause the video and try that and come right back. Welcome back, everybody. Hopefully you had a little fun playing around with those channels and those private channels that we discovered. Now that we've seen private channels and standard channels, I'm sure you're going to start having fun building these channels across your teams. However, I want to go ahead and point out that once you start having a ton of channels, it's going to be very useful to know that Microsoft's Teams, the entire list itself, has a filter. You can use that filter to go ahead and find certain channels. And it's just a text filter. Automatically filters your channel list for you and your team list as well. Now, that will work, but there's going to be certain channels that you're more involved in than others. So, with that being said, I want to go ahead and point out that since these teams will have multiple channels, it's very important to take a look at your channel notifications. Now, once we take a look at our channel notifications here, I want to go ahead and point out that we can actually choose to actually silence, or we'll call it just mute, certain channels. Or we can go ahead and have them notify us, whether someone makes a post, or they specifically mention a channel inside of a post. So with that being said, I'm going to go to the ellipses of my channels here. It doesn't matter which one we have. And I just want to point out that each one of them have channel notifications. Now, if you have a certain channel that you are more involved in than others, it makes sense to turn on notifications so that you're more involved. I'm going to go ahead and turn on a channel notification for my Project X channel. And by default, we do have channel notifications turned on for channel mentions, but not for new posts. So if you want to be notified anytime someone posts something in a channel, it's important to turn on the channel notification for it. That way, we can go ahead and see a banner pop up, that little purple icon we see pop up typically. And we'll see a notification in our activity feed in case we miss that banner. I can even set it for my replies, but I'm not going to do that here. I'm just going to go ahead and hit save. Now that I've modified the channel notifications for Project X, I'll go ahead and be alerted with the notification whether someone creates a post or they specifically mention the channel in a post. 
where someone does an at and they actually type in the project channel name, sending an alert to the entire team and everyone that's involved in the channel. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. At this point in time, I want you all to just take a second, pause the video, and actually try out setting up some channel notifications for some teams that you're involved in, or more specifically, some channels that you're more involved in than others in the teams that you're scattered across. Go ahead and pause the video and we'll talk soon. All right, hope you all had a little fun setting up some channel notifications for the certain channels that mean more to you than others. Now, with that being said, I want to go ahead and point out that if you have a certain channel that you want to access really quickly, it's very important to also pin channels to the top of your team list. Now, I can go ahead and pin a channel to the top of my team list, allowing me to see it separate from the team, just to keep certain channels across my teams organized. I'm going to go ahead and do that by going to the ellipses of my Project X channel and choosing to pin that channel, allowing it to be on the top of the list where I have a pin section now, another new feature Microsoft Teams added. I want you to go ahead and spend about a second or two going across the teams that you have access to and pinning the channels that you go to more commonly than others to the very top of the list. Now, in the beginner course, we talk about updating the logo for your teams. It's very beneficial to do that if you're gonna pin channels to the top of your list, simply so you can see a little logo or an icon to help match the name of the channel in case there's duplicate channel names across teams. In case you don't know how to update teams photos, if you are gonna pin channels, just think about it, each team has a general channel. Just go ahead and manage your team. Now, once you manage the team, and you actually are an owner, you will have settings where you can update that team picture and upload a picture from your computer, allowing it to go ahead and display as the icon set right there. At this point in time, go ahead and try pinning a certain channel to the top of your list, and going back if you want to unpin that channel from the original spot or the location that we added it to. Talk soon, everybody. Go ahead and practice that pinning option for a few channels that you have access to across your teams. Welcome back, everybody. Hope you had a little fun playing around with pinning certain channels to the top of your team list. Now that we've built some channels, both standard and private, and customized our team list a bit, I want to start actually talking about using a channel, like creating posts which Microsoft calls a modern day email. And we can actually do that down below in each and every channel that we have. I'm currently in the general channel. Now I'm gonna go ahead and instead of starting a basic conversation with a one line input box, I'm gonna use the format button. That letter A is the format button. When you give it a click, it makes a much larger input box with a subject line and a body. I'm going to go ahead and make a post. I'm going to call it my first post to the team. Now with this post, I'm going to go ahead and add a body. I can go ahead and mention specific people inside of the team with an at sign, then selecting their name from the list. I can mention channels if I need to. And that alerts everybody inside the channel. If I want, I can alert everyone on the team, regardless of your channel, by mentioning the entire team. Now this is great. We're building a post, slowly but surely. And I can even go ahead and go as far as marking this post as important, because we can do that with emails as well. Now, if you don't see this exclamation point, it might be hidden inside the ellipses, depending on your screen size. I would like to go ahead and point out that now that we have a post with the subject line and a body and a few other mentions that we've added in, there are some pretty cool things we can add into a post. Now, Microsoft Teams has emojis. We can go ahead and add those in. I even have GIFs that I can insert in. Let's pick a fitting one. I'll do this one here because I'm excited. And I even have stickers, more formally called memes. Be careful with these because you can customize them 
And I just don't want someone coming in and getting a little upset about that meme you've created. Now that we have a bunch of content in this post, I want to point out that once Microsoft Teams was released, a lot of people requested the ability to be able to post into multiple channels. So I know I've started this in general, but I also want it inside of Project X. Now because of the fact that I don't have a file attached, I can do that. I can upload this post so I don't have to duplicate it by posting it in multiple channels. And then selecting the channels. I can select private and standard channels across all of the teams that I have access to. And then update the two line inside of my message. Now with this post, once we do send out a post, I'm going to go ahead and hit send. I want to go ahead and point out that a cross post will go ahead and show up with the little symbol letting people know that this post has been posted across multiple channels. Now keep in mind, even though a post has been posted across multiple channels, you can edit them. You can edit the post by going to the ellipses and just updating the message there. Now, with that being said, when we edit a post that's posted across multiple channels edited there, I want to go ahead and point out that the Project X one also got updated. It updates both of the channels, even though you've updated one of them. That's a feature that Microsoft has rolled out as well. So cross-channel updates, cross-channel posts are pretty useful. The big takeaway that I want people to notice is if a file was attached, my option to go ahead and post across multiple channels will be disabled from me. At this point in time, I want you all to practice on your own teams, building a post, adding in some of the fun stuff that we have here, and actually posting it across multiple channels. Once you've done that, try heading over to the ellipses of the post, kind of like I'm about to hear, the ellipses of the post, and editing the post to see if both of the edits show up across the two channels that you posted it to. Go ahead and pause this video and try that out, and I'll see you all soon. Welcome back, everybody. So, hopefully you had a little bit fun creating your posts, and you got to experience how to use a mention. Just to let you know, you can also do that in Outlook. That adds people to the two line. Now, I do want to point out, about a few months ago, Microsoft released a new feature that kind of extends this. They're called tags. Now what I can do is I can get a group of people, let's say Learn It Instructor, or some one other person, and I can create a special tag, a special name, and I can use that tag to notify those people. So, with that being said, I want to go ahead and point out that I'm going to add in an additional member to my team. I'm going to go ahead and add in a member to my team here. Now my organization does allow guests, so I'll go ahead and add in this guest account here. Because we're allowed guests there, and I'll add them in. Great. So, now that we have some members in our teams, I want to go ahead and point out, instead of mentioning people one by one, I can go ahead and assign something called a tag. Now these tags will be great if I have large departments or little department groups that I can use to go ahead and ping and notify certain team members, as opposed to writing out each one of their names one by one. I'm going to manage my tags here and create one for my actual team. I'm just going to go ahead and build my first tag. And from there, we can actually go ahead and add people from the team, not our entire contact list, but from the team there. I can go ahead and add in my fast cream guest, and I can add in my learn it instructor, and I can create a tag. I want to point out tags can only be used inside of teams and not our chats. So now that we have that, I'm going to go ahead and use this tag. Now in order to use a tag, I'm just going to start a reply here. All we have to do is put in an at sign. And instead of picking someone's name, we're just going to go ahead and type in some characters inside of our tag name. And we can go ahead and send that out. And that will alert Learn It Instructor and my guest account that he's been notified for whatever reason that I needed to notify them. 
I want to point out that sometimes owners can disable using tags for their members where only owners can use them. And we can do that over when we manage our team. I can go ahead and dive into the settings because I am an owner. And notice how there's an all new tags setting that we have. Where I can go ahead and control the permissions of who can create tags within my team. Now I'll go ahead and change that right for all members, including the owners. Great. Now that we've seen a little bit about playing with tags there, I want you to just pause this video and actually try building your first tag and maybe adding a member or two and then going and using that tag to make sure that it actually works. And always remember that you can manage your tags and access a list of your tags inside of the team list when you go over to your tags there. Alrighty, hope you had a little fun playing around with tags. Now that we're back, I want to go ahead and point out that Microsoft has been updating this tool quite a lot since its release date in 2017. Now, these posts all live in the channels here that we've created. I currently have two posts. I want to go ahead and point out that some organizations use Teams internally and not externally. But some of our conversations are here and it's great to know that we can sometimes share a post to Outlook. That way we can continue the conversation elsewhere if need be. Now, within each one of these posts, notice how we can go ahead and give it a reaction. Hopefully nobody's angry. Now, I want to go ahead and point out next to these reactions that we have, you're going to go ahead and notice there's an option inside the ellipses to go ahead and share to Outlook. Now, when we click that, it's going to open up an Outlook module that will allow us to send an email to other people. We can encrypt it, insert our signatures. Let's go ahead and see how that looks by giving a click on share to Outlook there. All right, there's my Outlook little module there. Great. I want to go ahead and point out that we have our subject line filling in. We have the from line filling in for my email address. I can also add in people from my contacts. And on the very bottom, I can go ahead and scroll through this. And it's just building it inside of an email. In case I needed to attach an additional file, I can browse my computer or an additional cloud service like OneDrive or ShareFile or Dropbox or whatever your organization is using. If you have secure data, you can also encrypt this message as well. And inside of this ellipses, you're going to notice that you can insert signatures. And once you're happy with this message, you can also include more content into it. And you can go ahead and use these editing tools at the very bottom. And then you can go ahead and just hit send. Using Teams is great, but knowing that we can go ahead and send out these posts will make it even more beneficial for us. Go ahead and try checking out the share to Outlook button across your teams and channels and posts and think of ideas on when you might be able to utilize that. I'm sure you're starting to realize that Teams has some pretty nifty features that are pretty well thought out. Microsoft likes to see what people are using it for and then they build the features based off that in user voice. With that being said, let's go ahead and point out that the entire time that I've been working inside of this software, I've been using the Teams tab over here. I built a team, I had a couple channels, a private and a standard, and we're allowed to make posts. And we all know that some of these posts can have files and you can add them as tabs. We learn in our beginner videos. Now, with that being said, I wanna shift gears a little bit. And I wanna focus on the new additions to chat and how we can take advantage of chat as opposed to working with a group having spin-off conversations or instant messaging within the organization. So I want to go ahead and point out that you can always navigate the chat by clicking and starting a new chat by clicking on the new chat button. But just how in Outlook, when you wanted to start a new email, you can hit control on the letter N. You can do the same thing to start a new chat. While we're here, I just want to point out that you can actually use all of these as keyboard shortcuts. Because if you want to navigate across each one of these little tabs and little areas of your software, it's just a keyboard shortcut with control one. And if you go ahead and go down to chat, it'll be control two. 
and then you go to Teams and be Control-3, and so on and so forth. So, if you don't know, Outlook does the same thing to navigate from your calendar over to your mail, to your contact, to your Control-1, Control-2, Control-3. These are pretty nifty shortcuts that I like to use throughout the day. At this point in time, I'm going to go ahead and hit Control-N to start that chat. All right. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just message learn an instructor here. It will find the pre-existing thread if I have one, and there it is. I'm going to go ahead and say hello, opening up my format button here. I can go ahead and send out a little gift too, why not? I'll send that message on his way. Now, in the beginning videos, we talked about how you can make a video call, an audio call, and even share your screen, or even a certain application from your computer while you're in the chat. And this was great. Everyone loves this. But I want to go ahead and point out that with our chats, there's an all new pop out the chat button. You can actually notice them as you hover over each one of your threads. Now, a lot of people were asking for a way to pop this chat out in a separate window, and now we have it. It's been rolled out. Now, I do want to point out that if you're not seeing this in your software, you should definitely check out your profile. Because your profile has an option to check for updates, and this software does update pretty regularly. Now that we see that there, I'm going to go ahead and pop out this conversation. And I can go ahead and continue my conversation while continuing and focusing on the team as well. So go ahead and activate your chats as well. Start a new chat with the colleague and see if you have the pop out button. I want to go ahead and point out that you should be able to access it from the thread itself. And if you go up to the top, instead of adding a person, you can go ahead and notice that the pop out option is also available. I think that's pretty cool. Go ahead and pause this video. Try that out. And come right back. I'll see you soon. Welcome back, everybody. Hopefully we had fun playing out the pop-out chat windows. And if we didn't see it there, we've updated our software, so we do have it now. I do want to point out that sometimes when you have too many chat windows open, it gets a little distracting. So be sure to always close them once you're done, just so they're not living with 30 chat windows open at the very end of the day. Cool. Now that we see this over here, I want to go ahead and point out I want to focus on my calendar. Now I know I can go into Outlook and take a look at my appointments and book my meetings there. There's even a new Teams meeting button in Outlook. But my calendar is nicely accessible from Teams. I can go ahead and see a different month if I need to, or I can go ahead and switch the view that I have of my calendar. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new meeting here. And I'm gonna go ahead and do a meeting with Learn it instructor. Zero one. I'm gonna go ahead and add him in as a required attendee. And up to 15 people, I can go ahead and use my scheduling assistant. It's letting me know we're available from 3 p.m. to 3.30. And if I need to see it in greater detail, I can view the scheduling assistant from up top. Beautiful. Don't worry, I can add other people and add optional attendees from here and even a location. I'm going to go ahead and keep it in my time zone, but in case I needed to change it, I can do that from here. I'm going to go back to my details. So now that I went ahead and built this meeting here with Learn It Instructor, I'm not going to add an optional attendee. So what I want to go ahead and do here is send out this meeting invitation, but I forgot. I'm going to go ahead and point out that Learn It Instructor should bring some snacks. because I love snacks especially during meetings. I'm going to go ahead and hit send over here. Great. Now that meeting invite is going to show up my Outlook calendar as well as my Teams calendar because they are the same thing. I'm going to click on that invite now. So, I know our meeting's in 3.30. I know my dial-in info popped up as well as my conference code and my dial-in number that I need to call in. However, I want to go ahead and point out, when joining a meeting, it's very important to have it set up appropriately, especially if you're 
the organizer. Now, Microsoft has made it very easy to set up a meeting with our meeting options here. You have meeting options, as well as down here, where we can choose who's gonna be the presenter, you want a little noise every time someone pops in, or if you can create a lobby and who can bypass that lobby. I'm gonna go ahead and click on meeting options here. And I wanna go ahead and point out that I can choose who can bypass the lobby. We have people in my organization everyone or people in my organization and trusted organizations that I have set up. Always let callers bypass the lobby in case they're calling in. They don't need to be sitting there quietly. And I can go ahead and announce when callers join and leave. I probably wouldn't want this if I had a lot of people inside of my webinars or my meetings. I can even set who can be a presenter, whether it's people in my organization or specific people or just me. And you can go ahead and save those settings. And we just set up the meeting options for a meeting inside of Teams. I do want to mention to people that this meeting will also pop up in our Outlook calendar. And it's just nice to know that we have all of the beautiful features that we've used in Outlook, like our scheduling assistant, our different time zones, and our meeting options for our conference tools that we have available all in the grasp in one little page here. Go ahead and try playing around with your meetings and your calendars. Try scheduling a fake dummy meeting and inviting someone and seeing the scheduling assistant for yourself. I do want to point out once you add up to 15 people, the scheduling assistant will disable itself, but that's still pretty powerful. Go ahead and play around with that and come back. So now that I've set up a meeting, and I have my meeting options and my time zone set up appropriately. I do want to point out that you can always update this information, change the date and time, and you can send an update for the meetings. But in case you want to just go ahead and message people or have a chat with people that are invited with the meeting, you can do that before the meeting even starts. I go want to go ahead and point out that you can click on the meeting chat and you can go ahead and start a conversation like I'm running late. Be there in five, in case you have to go ahead and get set up a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and head back over to my details here. And now that I went ahead and done a chat, and I have the details, I wanna go ahead and point out that all invitees will go ahead and see that chat inside of their chat option of Teams that we're running a little bit late for the meeting. So with our meetings, they did add a new feature. Now, I know a lot of us are working remote, and if we are working remote, we don't have a lot of whiteboards. Because whenever I go into a training center or any conference room, I have a whiteboard to just brainstorm my ideas. So Microsoft added in a new tool called the whiteboard that you can use during your meetings. Now, you can always use a whiteboard and share it during your meeting, but you can also set up the whiteboard ahead of time. And I just want to go ahead and show you a little example of using a whiteboard or maybe having it set up before a meeting even starts to where once the meeting starts, you can just go ahead and share your whiteboard. Use whiteboard in Teams instead. But you can get the app as well because it's a standalone app and there's even a mobile app. Great. And we're up and running. So I want to go ahead and point out that our whiteboard does have a set of tools to where we can go ahead and brainstorm different ideas and multiple people can use this whiteboard and collaborate at the same time. Keep in mind, you can go ahead and invite other people to the whiteboard with the link. And if you need, you can also save the image of the whiteboard to your computer in case you want those for the meeting notes and the meeting details. Pretty cool. Now, I want to go ahead and point out that this whiteboard can also be used during the meeting when you join the meeting and share your screen, you'll have an option to share the whiteboard instead. I highly recommend to go ahead and download the applications on both your mobile devices, your iPads, and your laptops, just so it loads faster and you have the actual application for whiteboard, because we're using the online tool on whiteboard right now. I want you to go ahead and set up a meeting and play around with your whiteboard feature. Try to see if you can copy a web link and send it over to a colleague. 
and even see if you can go ahead and save the image to your computer as well from the settings there. Talk to y'all soon. Alrighty, it looks like it's coming time for my meeting with Learn It Instructor. I'm gonna go ahead and go to my calendar and just join this meeting. Now, when I hit join, I wanna go ahead and point out that it gives you an option to mute your microphone directly from here and also choose your microphone. I do have other join options like phone audio and even add a room if I'm working and there are Teams rooms that we have available in our organization. I wanna go ahead and point out that when we do turn on our camera, we have the ability to blur our backgrounds and use background effects, just so we can keep the focus on us. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my camera here, and I'm gonna browse through, hi everybody. I'm gonna go ahead and browse through these background effects, just to go ahead and see one properly fitting. And it allows me to go ahead and just cover the living room or the background conversations that are happening. So that way the focus is just on us during the meeting. Go ahead and try joining a meeting and setting up your background effects. Now the background effects do have to be set up per meeting basis, um, but it's pretty nifty that we do have this ability and there's quite a few that we have browsing through here. Now if you don't like the background effects, you can always just blur your background as well, but they're pretty cool. Go ahead and play around with this and come right back. Talk to you soon. Alrighty. Now that I'm set up for my meeting, I have my background effects on. I'm going to have my microphone muted when I pop in. I'm going to go ahead and click join now and pop into that meeting. Great. It's just me in here, everybody. Just me. But I just want to point out when I click on share, I can go ahead and share a PowerPoint, my desktop or a window and even my whiteboard. Pretty cool, pretty cool. And there's that previous session that we were working on earlier before the meeting started. And we can go ahead and continue on and draw out our little brainstorming session there. Pretty nifty. If you ever do need to go back and stop sharing your whiteboard, you can go ahead and go back to the share button. And you can go ahead and share a different application or a window. Do keep in mind if that application has a video, you should include system audio for that little application or that PowerPoint that has a video so that your sound can come through during the meeting. Great. Now that we see this over here, I want to go ahead and point out that with this meeting that we have, in case you did not set up your background effects before the meeting and you want to go and turn on your camera now, just know that the background effects option is also available while you're in the meeting. You can go ahead and change it if you want, and you can go ahead and preview them and apply them live during the meeting as well. So to summarize what we just talked about, we have some background effects, and we have a great way to go ahead and collaborate using this whiteboard once in the meeting. Go ahead and try joining a meeting and playing around with our whiteboard. And try playing around with your background effects. Talk to y'all soon. Welcome back everybody. So now that we're playing around with these meeting tools and options that we have available, I wanna go ahead and point out that we can also end the meeting now. Now previously Microsoft didn't have an end meeting button for everybody, but now that I'm the organizer, they've added the end meeting button where I can go ahead and end the meeting for everybody. Now with that being said, there's been quite a few additional tools within this meeting. You're also going to go ahead and notice that I have a raise hand icon in case there are quite a few participants and we have a little questions. We can use the raise hand icon as well now. So with these meeting options that we have, I just want to go ahead and point out that before I end this meeting, I'm going to go ahead and stop raising my hand. I'm also going to go ahead and download the attendee list for the meeting to make sure I keep track of who showed up and who hasn't because I'm the organizer and I can go ahead and download that straight and directly to my computer. Meeting attendee list. This fast cream joined on 6-3 at 3.01 p.m. I want to keep in mind just the organizer has the ability to go ahead and download that attendee list. 
directly from Teams, and you can do it during the meeting or at the end of the meeting or once the meeting has ended, which I'm about to do with the all new and meeting button. Cool. Go ahead and play around with your meeting tools. Try raising your hand a bit. You can end the meeting right after and see if you can go ahead and download that attendee list as well. Welcome back, everybody. This one will be short and sweet. I just want to let everyone know that on May 13th, 2020, Microsoft Teams has rolled out a three by three view of our meetings. So if we do have nine participants with their cameras on, we can go ahead and see all nine participants. And this will gradually roll out to everyone. So if you don't have it just yet and you're just watching this video, it'll come soon, but hopefully we'll have it. And if you don't, make sure you can go ahead and check for updates inside of your profile. The three by three grid we've all been asking for. Pretty cool. So now that we've gone through quite a bit of Microsoft Teams, we've dived a little bit in our calendar, the Teams, and the chat. I want to go ahead and start talking about our activity and our notification system. I'm going to go up to my profile and go over to my settings here. Now inside of my settings, if I am going to look at this all day, I would like to go ahead and put on the dark app mode. And I want to be sure that this application starts with my computer and it opens up in the background. So that way it doesn't pop up in front of me as I'm sending my emails in the morning. I also want to go ahead and spend some time setting up my notification settings. Make sure that I want to be alerted about certain things and the things that I don't really want to be alerted about, I can turn off for my activity feed. If I had more than one webcam or microphone, I can go ahead and choose the device that I want to connect. And at this point in time, I want to go ahead and make sure that you spend a little time playing around with these settings here, um, since you've done a little tour of the course. And I highly recommend to take a look at the beginning courses um, just to go ahead and see how a team is built and how channels are built and how to add tabs into a team as well. Go ahead and spend some time playing around with your settings here to see what you can go ahead and turn on and turn off. And I highly recommend to use the dark app mode if you are going to be using this software uh, many hours in the day. Congratulations, everybody. You've completed the advanced course for Microsoft Teams. I do want to point out that the software is ever growing. I hear that they're going to add in Teams lists and template types coming in soon. With that being said, I do want to point out there will be more trainings, but for right now, thanks for joining. I do highly recommend, highly, highly recommend to check out our learnit.com website to see our class offerings. And you can be connected with a sales rep and we can go ahead and see what private event or public event will be suited for you and your team. This was Fast Kareem teaching Microsoft Teams. I greatly appreciate everyone who attended, and I hope we're all doing well, and I hope this software suits you well and your team. Take care, everybody. Thanks for watching. Don't forget we also offer live classes in office applications, professional development, and private training. Visit learnit.com for more details. Please remember to like and subscribe and let us know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for choosing Learnit.